Hello everyone and welcome to episode 17 of the Rapid Rating Climb. As we are 9 ELO off of 1900, the aim is at least 2000, so we're almost 100 away. And if we win this, we gain 14 ELO, so we'll be above 1900. My opponent plays d4, so we're going to play c6. That is my favourite line against d4. Only recently, because most people just transitioned back into a Karo. And I love the Karo. I play this like every single uh, game. I don't know if it gets boring for you guys or not, but if you're a Karo player, then hopefully it's useful for you. You might be asking, Alex, why are you wearing glasses? I've never seen you wear glasses before. And that is because I normally wear contact lenses just all the time, but they were like hurting my eyes in the gym this morning. So I was like, yeah, no. I, I really need to wear some glasses today because my eyes are so tired from wearing contacts. But personal life aside, bishop d3 is an odd move because after I take the pawn and bishop takes, knight f6 comes with tempo on the bishop. Normally a knight develops to take there. So he wants to put the bishop on f3, which seems odd because this bishop is blunted. Like... That's part of the reason why c6 is good, is because the light squares on the queen side are well defended, and this diagonal is very strong. So that seems like an odd choice from my opponent. I'm going to play bishop f5, because I want to go e6 to never ever allow d5 to be played. And if d5 can never be played, then this bishop will always remain bad. That's my logic, right? So e6, don't allow d4, sorry, d5. C3 is also odd, because I feel like white should be trying to play the d5, in which case c4 makes sense to try and support the push. This seems like a very comfortable position. I mean, my bishop is great on this diagonal. This is where the white bishop normally belongs. So I'm a happy man. I'm a happy man. I think <sighs> bishop d6 makes sense. Bishop f4 challenging, queen c7. And then if takes takes, I think I'm happy. I don't have to go into that. But I don't see a reason not to. So let's do it. I suppose one advance... Ooh, that's an odd move though. Because now I play queen c7 and you can't go bishop f4 ever. Because previously, if bishop d6, bishop f4, queen c7, white can play a move like queen d2 to support the bishop, or queen c1 to allow the knight to come to d2. But now queen c7, and I dominate this diagonal. And the h2 pawn is under threat of capture, so this comes with a tempo as well. Knight g6. Dropping the bishop back makes a lot of sense. I'd like to play h5, h4 maybe. So let's drop back. We also control the e4 square twice. So white can't play knight to e4. He could go rook e1 and then after like h5 go knight e4, but that just hangs h2. h2 hangs if everything gets traded there. So what about h5, h3, h4, knight e4, takes, takes? Then white's good. Then he's good. So. H5, H3. Oh, then we can just take, though. And then we just win a pawn. Okay, yeah, that looks good. Remember, we have three defenders on H5. Not like that, but like this. Come on. Okay. My rook defends h5, as we can all see, although my game is lagging for some reason. I don't know how chess can lag. And then he's got three attackers. Let me just re reload the page real quick. I don't know why this is <laughs> acting up so much. There we go. h4, I think his point is that he can now play knight f1 to defend h2. So he survives. But... I can just go h3, probably. 
And whilst he can play g3 to shut off this diagonal, the light squares are now incredibly weak around his king. Do I want to allow that though? So I quite like the diagonal being open. But then he's going to play h3 if I let him. So whilst my attack is probably done for now, like I think h3 is just cashing in the chips almost. It does create a long-term positional weakness for white. It doesn't look fun. I'm trying to see if we have anything better, but then white just goes h3, sorry, h3 himself and stops us. So I think we should push. Get g3 out of him. We are now have a strong grip over g2, which should be a long-term advantage. And a move that's coming to mind is bishop h5. Because his bishop's pinned to the queen, and we force a trade of bishops. And because his light squares are so weak, that's quite attractive to me. It's an attractive move. And then our queen will always be potentially threatening to get in. Because he won't have a bishop monitoring this diagonal. I think that makes sense. Because his light squared bishop is his best defensive piece. This knight was a great defensive piece. But now, I mean, the pawns are doing a good enough job defending the dark squares. He doesn't need a knight helping out as well. His light squares are the thing that's weak. So if we can trade off the light squared bishop... Sure, at the cost of our light squared bishop. But we were kind of looking at nothing anyway. You know. Okay, knight c4. You know what I'm going to do? Let me think. I want to kind of bait him into taking my bishop. Although, because I'm, I'm thinking that it gives me more pieces to play on the light squares with. If he trades off a knight for a bishop. But bishop f4 is kind of annoying. It's my only problem. But maybe it's just a one move threat. Maybe it's not really that big a deal. We can take. Queen takes. Now we could do takes. Knight takes d6 with check first. Queen takes. Queen takes. Knight bd7. Bishop f4. I don't want to trade queens, even though queen to d5 looks nice. I want to put a knight on d5, so... Well, where does the queen go, actually? Because if the queen goes to e7, there could be tricks on the e-file. But no, we have too much for hold over d5, I don't think so. So let's take. I think that works. Expecting him to snap the bishop off first. Because if he doesn't... Yeah, okay. As expected. After queen takes f4 though, we could play knight d4, d5 even, to stop bishop f4. So queen f3, knight d5, c4 is the key move, kicking the knight away. C4. If we go back, bishop f5, queen d4, rook d1. That looks too scary. I don't want to allow that. Don't like that one bit. An idea that I quite like is rook h5, rook f5, going like this, which looks a bit odd, but I think it makes a lot of sense. So we could just go knight bd7, bishop f5. Then where does the queen go? Queen e7. Let's say knight e3. Hmm. I don't know. Don't know about that. It's tricky. 
Now, knight to h5 also stops bishop f4. The knight just looks a bit weird. He might even be able to play g4 there. Play like, I don't know, g5. So, again, yeah, knight d5 is on the radar, but c4. Maybe knight e7? I don't know if that helps, though. Bishop here. You know what? I think we might just have to trade queens. As much as I'd like to attack white, I think we're just going to have to trade queens with him. And to be fair, this pawn is very difficult to win. It's a very difficult pawn to actually get to. The king can't get to it. This knight, because of the geometry of there being like one square diagonally between them, takes four moves to get there. A rook's going to struggle to get it. Doesn't make a lot of sense to trade queens right now. The problem is there's nowhere else for our queen to go, so I don't see any other option. And he has to trade, because otherwise we're going to checkmate him. We could take with the pawn. But I don't want to. I want to take with the knight. Do you have a tempo on the bishop? We'll attack the bishop. Bishop d6 could be the move. Yeah. Stops us from castling. Knight b6 makes a lot of sense to stop c4. And we can even go into c4 or even back to c8 to kick the bishop out. Maybe we even want to castle queenside. Castling queenside looks quite good, you know. Okay, knight b6. I'm expecting... Well, b3 isn't really playable because we just take. Because b3 stops knight c4, but then we just take on c3. So the knights are actually being really tricky over on the queenside here. It's very difficult to actually dislodge them. Bishop c5 might be a move. Knight c4. If b3 though. Now we can't take on c3 because we lose a knight. Hmm. Okay, so he goes knight c4 himself. Sorry, knight d2 to defend the c4 square with the knight. It's logical. I think, we, I think we can just queenside castle. Or king d7 might actually be better. Although, although king d7 will mean that he can check me with a knight if he gets to either of these squares. Which looks pretty promising for him. So, don't like that. So let's queenside castle. Attack the bishop. Bishop e5 attacking g7. I don't really want to play f6, but we will push the bishop to f4 and then we can ruin the structure. So okay, that move makes a lot of sense. And the move c4 is now on the cards for white. But we can maybe bait him into playing c4 because if he does, then d4 is going to become a massive weakness. So you might want to try and bait him into that. The thing is, I, it's not easy for me to come up with a plan here, although I like the position. We need to actually come up with a plan of action. Because his knight is restricting the move that I want to play, which is knight c4 to attack the bishop and pressure the pawn, right? These sorts of ideas look nice, but it's never going to happen because of the way his pieces are set up. Um, I'm thinking of lifting the rook somehow, but it's not really doing a whole lot. Even if it does get lifted. Let me think. Something kind of nice is knight a4 pressuring these pawns, right? b3 isn't playable because we take, okay? 
If c4 is played again, we bait c4 out so that d4 becomes weak. So my idea is knight a4 playing for c5 to open up the d file to put pressure on this knight. And so an example line might be knight a4. Actually, he can just bring over rook to d1 to defend the knight, though. But then there's ideas of like takes, takes, takes. With like a. That doesn't even fork. What am I on about? Although, maybe there's ideas of like. No. That again doesn't work. I'm going to play knight a4 anyway. Just because I don't think it can be a bad move. Because b3, again, is never playable. And I want him to play c4. I want c4 because I want d4 to be weak. Because the way our pawn structure works, we have a big clamp on the d5 square. So if we can stop this pawn from advancing, there's a good chance we can win it. Okay. That move makes a lot of sense. c5 is a move I want to play. If it takes... Then the d-file opens up. Knight takes c3, pawn takes c3, rook takes d2 looks winning. c5, bishop takes, knight takes, pawn takes, knight takes c3. Then the rook can take on c3 because my knight is no longer on a4. And then rook takes d2. That's equal material, but I think we're better because white has back rank problems and we're on the second rank. So here, 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 here. B2 hangs. So what can he play? Like rook B3. Then we have rook HD8. Am I missing anything? Maybe, but we'll find out. C5. If B3. Knight takes C3. And then he can take here with the bishop. But I think just King B8. Defending A7 and stepping off the C file. I think that's beneficial to us. Because we then split his structure. And the D pawn is then isolated. This might be the best line for him. But, again, we're kind of just asking him a question to see what he's going to do here, because it's not an obvious choice. C5 is a big move to play, right? By the way, if you've made it this far into the video, I really appreciate your support. And if you want to see more videos like this, smash the like and subscribe button down below so the YouTube algorithm recommends you not even more of my videos necessarily, but more like educational chess videos. If you want to step away from the more like faster paced chess videos, I guess, like if you prefer the slower games with deeper explanations, then, you know, let the YouTube algorithm know. And sure, I'll get a bit of a side benefit from that. <laughs> but, whoa. 94, what a move. I did not consider that move. So now c4, c5, sorry, is actually under significant threat. And if we take, then c takes comes with discovered check. King moves to b8. Bishop d6 check, king moves to a8. It's not lovely, but... Is there a better option? Can I just go c4? I don't really want to go c4 though. But I also don't want to open up all his pieces. b6? To keep the c file closed? b6 takes, 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 takes. I'm just down a pawn. Because there's no taking on c3 with a discovered attack on the knight. So maybe I have to go c4, but then c4, knight d6 check, and everything in my position hangs. 
Knight d6 is a big threat. Okay, I think I missed that. Hmm. Knight d6 is a problem. If I take on here, maybe you can just go knight d6 check. And if takes takes maybe d3 maybe d3 but then rook d1 knight b2 rook d2 knight c4 Four comes with a fork. You with me? Okay. So here, knight d6, I think we can sack the rook. If here, and he takes back, he gets a ton of activity. But we survive. I think I'm going to have to go for this. Definitely not a fun line to walk into. But I think knight d6, we can take it and push d3. Okay, he goes for this line. Perhaps better. Just considering my options. Could go to d7. But that's way too scary with this bishop cutting off my escape. We're going to have to move and kind of just beg for our lives. He could play knight d6 rather than bishop d6 as well. Knight d6, I think we go bishop, sorry, rook d7 to defend f7. Also keep an eye on c7. b3? Okay. Well. We've only got one square. But the thing is, if his attack here doesn't come to fruition, then the d-pawn is just forever weak. It's just isolated. And although our king position might be a bit vulnerable, we have significant control over d5, so he can never move this pawn. In the long term, he will have back rank problems as well, because of the h3 pawn we pushed ages ago, right? It's a long term weakness. Knight d6. Here, taking is bad. It's nothing like the previous position. So I think just rook d7. Defend f7, keep an eye on c7. There is no ideas of rook c8, not only because our rook covers it, but also our knight covers it, which could be useful if we want to get do something else with this rook. Potentially lift it, or maybe even double up on the d-file to kick this knight out. If the knight ever goes to c4, we do not take it, unless there's a, there's a good tactical reason. Because then we join his pawns back together, and he could potentially go for d5 at some point which will ruin our position. We cannot allow that. So we've got to be careful with the way that we end up trading if we do. If he plays a move like knight c4 here, I think we go rook h to d8. And if he takes, we take back with the knight to attack the pawn. Bishop c5 defending, knight back. Playing for like b6 and then moving the knight and then winning the pawn. Hopefully you're with me. But although it looks very scary, white's kind of run out of firepower. We could even play the move knight c8 to try and trade knights and rooks. If white cooperates, that's good. But I don't think white will cooperate. If knight c8, I expect a move like knight c4 or knight e4. And he'll claim that our knight is stupid on this square. So let's just double up. That can't be bad. Like, we're doubling up, attacking a knight, and pressuring a weak pawn. Like, that can never be a bad move. If knight b5, a6 looks nice. a6 does look nice, forcing the knight back, and then takes, takes, takes. And there's no tactics of bishop here or anything, because after the rook's trade, bishop c5, this is mate, because the rook 
this rook moved to c3. So again, back rank mate could be a big problem for white. So knight c4, as more expected. We don't want to take because after pawn takes, he joins his pawns back together. I don't want to allow that. So I have to actually find a move here though. If I move this knight, if takes takes something like bishop b2, he's defending. And I ruin my pawn structure. Huh. And I can't really move this either rook over to the d file, c file, because d6 is too weak. Hmm. What happens if I do take? Take, take. Take, take. I'm low on time here. Knight b6. Bishop here, knight a4. So, takes, takes, there. What about there? Rook c8. C5. Then the knight returns back to d5. And we set up a blockade. I don't think we have anything better, in all honesty. Although I said I didn't want to do this, I think it's the best way forward. Because we can try and set up a blockade of both pawns. And then you get like a hanging pawn structure, which is where you have like the two pawns next to each other because they both can't defend each other at the same time. If one of them advances, the other is weak. If this one advances, this one is weak. As long as we don't allow d5 to be successful, then I think we're good. Rook c8, I want to see this, and then I want to do this. And then I think I'm happy. Then I think I'm happy. And it's not perfect, but we set up a very nice blockade and this pawn is going to be weak. It's going to be a long end game. It's going to be a long and grindy end game. But I have faith that we can pull this off. It might even be worth bringing the king up to c6 to blockade with the king. Because on our light square it should be very safe. It can't be exposed down the c file because the c file is blocked and it can't be exposed on the b file fire b6 because we have full control over b6 so we could potentially use our king and knight to block off these pawns very effectively and the king could act as like a lone blockader on a square like d5 maybe at some point okay maybe he wants to do this maybe but i'm not really scared of that Maybe he wants to swing like that, though. But as long as we go g6, we stop that. He goes via e4. Hmm. So maybe we put a rook on the h file. <laughs> maybe. So I w I'm going to go king c7 first. Because I don't want to allow c6. Okay, that's a weird move. Oh, I did have that, probably, with multiple threats. Okay, I missed that. Tunnel visioned a bit. Let's get the king to c6, set up the blockade, and then we can get our rooks into the game more effectively. It's going to be tricky. I think I literally just missed a win with knight b4, just attacking a2 and also threatening to come into d3 with a massive fork. But such is chess. Such is chess. Also, if we can get our knight somehow to f3, that could be very good. Yeah, let's go rook h8. Stop rook h4. Don't want to allow that. This is an important pawn. We don't want it to become weak. Um, could play something like knight f6, rook d5. But then where's the knight going? 
Not sure. Not sure, because the rook can come to f4 and put a lot of pressure on the f7 pawn. So the knight on d5 stops that. f3? Maybe he wants to do that. Okay. Okay, buddy. Cool idea. Play rook h6. This rook needs a better home. Really does need a better home. If I could teleport a rook to like b5, it'd be great, but I can't do that. Obviously. This is kind of tempting, you know. Something like rook here, f4. And then if he goes like this, we can get the knight in. I kind of like that, you know. I'm going to do it. It looks dubious. Because e6 is weak, which is why I played rook h6, to preemptively defend e6. But f4 could cause some problems for white. His bishop can't access c1 right now either. And this comes with a tempo, obviously. The rook needs to choose where it's going to go. Here it might be vulnerable to some tactics or something in the future. Don't know. It could be. Goes back to e2. Okay, let's push. If he take if he takes like that, then obviously knight takes. Attack the rook, threaten like rook d3. Rookie free stops it, but looks flimsy. Looks flimsy. So I think he probably needs to go g4. But then we get the e3 square. And we can put our king on d5 probably. To hold e6. Also d4 is still under attack by our rook. The king also now can't access g3 to attack h3 because f4 defends that. If we can get g5 in as well, then we'll be very, very well supported. In the future, there may be ideas of like e5 breaking the e-file open under the right circumstances. That move doesn't do anything. Maybe he's trying to soften up b6 by pushing, but that's going to take him a while. We need to find a breakthrough, though. That's the problem. Well, let's start with g5, securing our position. Hmm. If a5 gets played, we might even be able to play king b5 and try and win the pawn. Bishop c3, though. E five ninety one. That looks flimsy. That looks flimsy. Cool idea though. Worth bearing in mind. The knight does have a check on d one. If we manage to play e five to get the rook involved, there's no easy breakthrough here. No easy breakthrough. There's potentially ideas of like rook h four. Knight takes g four. Pawn takes g four. Rook takes g four. Try and force the pawns through. But then the king always has the f3 square to go to. And that that gets shut down pretty quick. We have a dominant position, right? That much is clear. But we have to actually make it... Like, like, like convert the position. We can't just be better. We have to prove why we are better. There could actually be some kind of exchange sacrifice on d4. Maybe? Like, well, rook h8 walks into d5. 
something like, I don't know, rook d5, rook h7, rook d7, rook takes, d4, bishop takes, rook takes. That's going to take a fair few moves. That's an odd move. Okay. Let's go rook d5. Freeze the pawns in place. Again, just make it hard for our opponent to move. Kind of just throw the ball back in his court as well. Especially because I'm low on time. If I can make some easy moves, I'm going to gain some valuable seconds. Like rook h8, rook d8. Or maybe rook d7. Might be a bit better because it protects b7. Just in case. So like rook h7, rook d7. There is even ideas of playing e5 then. And then like after pawn takes, maybe going like rook d2. But then rook e1. Then rook e1. And I don't think I have enough there. Trying to think, can it work? I don't think so. Also, the e pawn is going to be very scary if we try and play e5. We might have to try and go after a4, you know. Okay. Let's go rook h7. Well, now. E5 was actually on the cards because this rook was hanging. But I think I'd rather double up before I play E5, to be fair. Because otherwise, if I play E5 on that move, then white can just not react. Maybe E4 takes takes. But then he can go here. Maybe I have something like knight e5, check pawn, takes rook, takes rook. This is very complicated. This is why knights are great, because they just cause so much chaos. Especially because the kingside pawns are like so tangled up. And we have this pawn wedge in the center, making this bishop not useless, but like it lacks effectivity. Effectivity? Maybe that's the right word. You get what I'm saying. But I also don't see the need to rush this position. Rook hd7, e5. Maybe his plan is... Well, he can't bring a rook d1 anyway. Because our knight controls d1. So this pin is always going to exist. If he keeps his rook on the d-file. He might have to move the rook off the d-file to stop e5 from coming in. Which is a difficult thing for a human to do, to admit that they've misplaced a piece and just move it back. Like, it takes a lot of mental strength to be able to do that. So, okay. I'm going to play rook hd7 and put a ton of pressure on this pawn. And it also helps to defend the b7 pawn, so if white tries to like double stack on the b file, then we don't care. I mean, he can't really do that anyway, so that is fine because it would block off the bishop. He can't do that because then I'm just going to win a pawn. Most likely, just considering some variations, but it's a far easier position to play for us for sure. Even though we have barely any time, it's a nice position. Um, he actually goes back. Fair play to him. That's a tough move to make, to admit the rook didn't belong there. Now it's much harder for us to play e5, and we need to come up with a plan. Need to come up with a plan, which is not simple. Rotating the knight like this doesn't do anything. F3 is defended. Maybe we have to give up the exchange with rook d4, bishop d4, rook d4. And then we can push this pawn through, actually, and like win g4. So that might be the way to go. Because he also... 
say it's my turn and take, 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 he can't challenge the e-file with any rooks. This is weak. This is weak. I'm going to go e5, e4, and then g4 is weak. I think the exchange sack should work. Again, there's no need to rush it, but oh, he sacks the exchange. Whoa. This makes a lot of sense to me. Takes, takes. Okay, here I need to be accurate because now I'm up an exchange. don't like the fact that he gets a pass pawn, but... Mm, this is tough. Let's do it, let's do it. Ooh, okay, take. That, that can't be good. Check. Because now we have the e-file, and he doesn't have a pass pawn. So that can only benefit us, right? Let's go... I need to play this to stop bishop here. But the bishop's pinned anyway, I missed that. The bishop's pinned. But, okay. This is a fine move. We blockade the c-pawn anyway. Again, if I come back to d7, then the king just moves up again and defends, so I gain nothing. I need to make use of the open e-file here. Also, if I move this rook, I can maybe even put the king on d5. But there's also no need. Okay, well that doesn't threaten anything. Um, let's just move back. B7 is perfectly well defended. B6 is also perfectly well defended. If he goes A5 looking for A6, then I think we just take it. Whoa, okay. He's just admitting he has no moves. Okay, let's double up. We want to do this and we want to do this. How are you going to stop me? How are you going to stop me? This looks like game over. White definitely should have taken here. Just checking for anything. Yep, let's infiltrate. How does he defend? Bishop g1. But then just rook g2. Double attack. And then I forcefully win the pawn and then the pawn gets through. He can control the um, h1 square of a rook, but I'm going to break through eventually. Or I can just leave my rook and my pawn over there, controlling his rook, and then win some more pawns. But we should be able to force the pawn through and force him to sack a piece for it. If this bishop was on g3, it might be a slightly different story, but he also can't get the bishop to g3. So that's not a problem. His rook's just very weirdly placed, like all his pieces are really. They're in the center of the board, but they're not doing a whole lot because my king just blockades c5. c5 can't do anything. And if c5 can't go anywhere, then all of his lines are blocked off. So, okay. Let's take. He's controlling h1, so. Okay, he's threatening this now. Do I throw in a check? Why not? King here. Then I have rook here. And I'm threatening rook e7, picking up the bishop. Ooh, that's actually quite cool. 
King here, Rook here, Rook here defending, Rook check, King moves, take, 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 and then we just push. Okay, yeah, so he doesn't allow that. Can do this to defend. Let's do it. I'm not blundering anything. This king can't be attacked to be taken off the defense of the rook. This bishop's also tied down to this defense right now. Next move, I think, is this. Attacking the bishop, forcing it to choose which pawn it wants to look at. It should keep an eye on this one, really. So maybe a move like... Well, g1, we just push. And if here, and he goes here, that looks really flimsy. Maybe we can't exploit it yet, but h8. That looks pretty devastating to me. h8, h2. What am I on about h8? <laughs> no idea. No idea. This is a long ass game, by the way. So, if you're still here, then thank you very much. I really appreciate it, and I hope you're learning a lot. But this should be pr a pretty easy clean up to get us above 1900 ELO. So, I'm pretty happy. Pretty happy. Now, obviously, I've still got to be accurate. I've got to not blunder anything, which is why I've been careful with quite a lot of my moves over the past like 10 moves because. It makes it a lot easier with my king on a light square because I'm not blundering any kind of skewer or like pin or something. So that's something to bear in mind. Like if your opponent's got a bishop, just wacky king on the opposite color of the bishop, and then there's less things to blunder, right? Also, this rook being on d5, same thing. It's on a light square. But yeah, this is very tough for my opponent to deal with. He's just got no plan because, like, f4, rook e2, the bishop has nowhere to go, really. The bishop comes here, then rook e4, rook d1, takes, we just trade everything, and then push this pawn. Because that's the other problem. We can always just trade everything off to get our pawn through. Let's attack the bishop. Where are you going? F2 we push. And the rook's a bit overloaded. Okay. Let's push. This doesn't really work because this attacks the rook. So it's not that effective. Rook H1 I'm expecting. Although he doesn't have to play it to be fair. Yeah, he plays it anyway. Um, God, why is he making this so difficult, man? Let's start with this. Let's start with this. Attack the bishop. Where are you going? Okay. Well, my idea was um, if bishop e3, then I give this check. And now the king can't come to c3 because the bishop no longer blocks the file. So after king b3, then I return back here. And the bishop can't come back to d4 because the king isn't defending it anymore. That was my, that, that, that was my plan. But anyway, opponent just runs out of time. There's no good moves to play anyway. So... I'm well aware this video has gone on for very long, so the game review I will try to keep fairly short, but we'll switch over to the game analysis now. Okay, well, we got 88% accuracy. My opponent got 84, so very high level game. And I think he did hold the advantage at some point. This is a strange line of the Karo, though, because the knight just attacks the bishop, right? The development makes sense. C3 I criticized, and the computer doesn't really like it. Computer prefers knight e2 or g4. G4? Are you serious? 
and then you just pretend you didn't even play G4. Okay, whatever, computer, whatever. No one's ever playing that in their life. Anyway, although I criticised the opening a little bit, it's nothing awful. Bishop G6, knight E2, H5. H4, knight GF1. Yeah, I played H3 because I didn't want him to play H3. But maybe I should have let him to keep my bishop's diagonal open. Computer just wants me to develop as normal, but okay. H3, I think, offered some chances. Let's see, 4. Knight takes d6. Queen takes, queen takes. Knight bd7. And here, I had to play queen d5. Because if I retreat, then white has all to play. This bishop's amazing. This queen's amazing. This rook's amazing. The knight's going to get in like this or something. It's It's not good. So, I've got to trade queens. Takes, takes. Bishop b6. And the game is pretty equal here, right? But I felt like I should be trying to push for something. Knight a4 is not good, though. King c7 is a bit better. Controlling d6. Rook h e8. Trying to play for e5, maybe. But okay. Okay. Rook a c1. I wanted to make something happen, right? Because I'm trying to win. C5 is a mistake, though. My plan... My plan was, like, bishop takes. And then knight takes. Pawn takes. And knight takes C3. Now, if he takes back, then I'm good. But the computer's saying knight C4, and then he gets into D6. And if knight B5, then I see him A4. And then it's game over. Yeah, I missed this. Definitely missed this. Um, but it's okay. He goes knight e4. And c takes is my only option. Because if I play a move like c4, then b3? b3? What about this? Rook takes, pawn takes, knight b2 coming into d3 and I'm better? Wow, okay. Well, that's not how the game went. He just, I took, he took, king b8, b3, knight comes back, knight d6, and rook d7 and I'm good. It looks scary, but it's fine now. Rook ed1, rook hd8, knight c4, and yet yeah, it, it, it is best to take. Because the problem is, I have no other moves. What else am I going to do? My rooks belong on the d-file. This knight belongs on d5. I don't want to move any of my pawns. Like, there's no other moves but to take. And after takes, takes, knight b6, I force this wedge. Like, I force him to create this wedge. Put the knight on d5. The knight can never be attacked, ever. Rook e1. And here the move is b5? What? If he takes on Poussant, just A takes. Just opening up the queen side. I guess this is quite weak, but I didn't I didn't spot this. Rookie one. But you also have knight b4. This is what I missed, because A2 hangs. And you're threatening knight d3, forking everything. I, I was too worried about the rook getting in, I was panicking a little bit. White can go rook c3. You can't actually take on a2, can you? Rook b3 in the knight is basically trapped. So you'd have to play rook d4. Rook b3 with an attack on the rook. Rook c4. And you are just up a pawn. Although, here, here. This. Oh, there's back rank mating problems. You can't take the knight because of mate. So, okay. I kind of just didn't think about b5. I thought it was only helping white if I trade off his pawn, but... Okay. King c7. a3. King c6. Rook e4. Rook h8. This isn't perfect, but I definitely have an advantage because his bishop is just straight up worse than my knight. 
Rook h6, king f2, f5, not a good move. Not a good move. Well, it's okay, but it's not great. Apparently g5 is better. I don't know why. g5, rook e5, rook g6. This can't be the plan. That can't be the plan. A4. What? What if he just shuffles? What's what's the idea? G4. What about F4? Then you come back. I don't understand this. I don't see how this is good. What if he just keeps shuffling? What's my point? Rook G8, shuffle. Knight B4, shuffle. I guess this is a 4. But... It's, it's odd. If the pawn stays on a3, that doesn't even happen anyway. So, I thought this made a lot of practical sense. f5 and f4, trying to force something. And yeah, after g4, it is actually good for me. Because of knight e3. a4, and here e5, apparently. Oh, because knight d1... Wait, what? Knight d1, king f1... Rook d3, ooh. So the bishop's under attack, and this is under attack. If king g1 stepping out of check, then takes, takes, and then we take. No, we don't take. Go rook e6 winning this pawn? No, rook e6 winning this pawn. Rook e2, then we take on f3. And his king is just pretty stranded. And my king is keeping his rook busy with this. Okay. Okay, well that's that makes sense. But I didn't see that with low time. And I thought that he couldn't do anything anyway. So I could just double up. Rook d2 just loses to e5. He can't take the rook hangs. If he moves the rook, then I take. And if he plays a move like bishop c3... Then he's kind of in Zugzwang. Computer wants knight c4, but like let's just say goes um to b2 so that knight c4 doesn't exist. Then I assume we're just coming over. Let's say he plays I don't know, bishop a1. Then yeah, rook hd8, and we're just gonna win this pawn straight up. This rook can't help in the defense because c4 is covered and d1 is covered. And the rook can't swing around like this because it blocks the bishop's defense off. So, okay, yeah, I just missed that because I was playing quickly. Rook h7, rook e2, rook hd7. And then he took. I just don't understand. Here, I don't know why he doesn't just shuffle. Let's say rook ce1. e5 was my idea. Takes. Then... What? Knight g2, rook c1, knight e3, well that's not good. So, knight d1, king f1, and it just repeats. So what's the idea? Rook e7, rook a2. What if he goes like this though, defending c5? This is not simple, because I don't think this is good. Takes, takes... I mean, it's probably better for black. Probably because a4 is weak. But it's not obvious. Rook takes e3 just makes my life easy. Because after takes, takes e5, e5 is the best move. By a fair margin, because it forces the game open. See, I was expecting takes... And I can try and infiltrate, but I can also just take. And we kind of force a trade, because the rook has nowhere really good to go. And the king struggles to get in. I was looking at king e4. 
apparently rook d1 attacking the bishop, bishop c3, king c4, bishop, if he goes to b2, like this, then we win h2. h2 is just too weak. And I guess this isn't a problem because we can just get behind the pawn like this. Push h2 and it's game over. So that was my plan if he takes, but he didn't take. And apparently going to c4 is best. But here I figured I'd just take. And whilst this might not be the most accurate way of going about it, I thought it was the simplest given the time situation. Just win h2, bully the king a little bit. And yeah, here my idea was bishop e3. Rook c2 check, king b3, rook e2. Bishop cannot return to d4 now. So the bishop, where does he even go? If he goes to a square like c1, we have this, but we can also just win the c5 pawn. That was what I was going to do. And then it's just completely dominating. This rook dominates this rook and also helps out blocking his king off and controlling the bishop. That's game over. That's one hour passed on the game, uh, on the video, sorry. So I think this is a great way to leave it at 1900 ELO. 95 more ELO to go. I'll see you in the next one.